Welcome to the Celebrate Brave podcast. I'm Nicole Church Steinbach, your host and the international bravery coach for women in tech. I serve women all over the world to earn more money, create more opportunities, and thrive in the tech industry because tech needs all of us. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, brave people, and welcome back to another solo episode. I am so excited that you are spending your precious time with this content. You know, women in tech, we are such an important aspect of making tech better for the entire world. All right. The inspiration for this podcast episode actually comes from an amazing client. Her name is Dora and it's all over my social feed. She had such incredible results that she decided she would fly out to Colorado and we took a hike together. We spent time together. It was really, really amazing and a reminder to me of the change I'm creating and how amazing it is when clients really step into who they are, step into what they want to create, and then go out and make the world better with it. So while we were on this hike, we were talking a little bit about some hesitancy we see with women in tech. And I was expressing some confusion about choices that I saw a lot of women making in early 2021. And she dropped a truth on me. I had to stop and just let it hit my body. Let it hit my brain. Let it enter my heart. I stood still for so long that my my little dog, who can be such a diva, got annoyed. <laughs> Mr. Lacritz, my dog, got annoyed because it was so real and so true. So here it is. Women are waiting for their white knight to create their career. Women are waiting for Prince Charming the professional Prince Charming, to build your career. Oof. We know that this is a phenomenon in dating. We know that we've been fed these stories all over the world, different names, white knights. There are lots of other characters, right? The Prince Raj and all these things. And we've taken that lie and we've brought it into our professional careers as well. Look, I can't talk about dating. (laughs) I was, I was 23, I think when I met my husband or maybe 22, we started seriously dating when we were 24. Yeah. 24. I'm 40. I'm about to be 41. Actually, when this publishes, I might already be 41. I have no clue about dating. So I'm leaving that one. (laughs) I am leaving that one. But I know a lot about being a woman in tech. A lot. Former executive, global senior director, worked in over 25 countries with women in tech and men in tech, obviously. And now I coach exclusively. I coach exclusively women in tech all over the world. Australia, Hong Kong. I believe I'm onboarding someone in China, India, Singapore. I'm going around the world. South Africa, a bunch of European countries, Romania, Germany, Italy, France, Denmark. Oh my gosh, Spain. I'm so scared I'm going to forget someone. Ireland, England. I think I got everybody. If I didn't, it's, it's just because it's early morning and I love you. Canada, United States all over the world. I know a lot about being a woman in tech. Here's the deal. She's right. There are too many of you who are waiting for the white knight or the professional Prince Charming (laughs) to show up. But here's the thing. You ready? Here's the thing. There is no magical recruiter that's going to reach out and scoot 
you into the best role ever. That literally does not exist. (laughs) There is no project manager who's going to establish and protect your boundaries and your life. There's no manager that's going to, you know, download their negotiation or their conflict skills and set you up for the rest of your career. There's no HR training or representative that's going to protect you and your energy. And there's no process. There's no process that ensures, <laughs> ensures, I'm sorry, I'm laughing so hard, but this is hilarious when you really think about it. This is what we do. This is what so many women are doing. There's no process that's going to ensure your results lead to promotions and raises. (laughs) It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. There's no magical recruiter or magical project manager or magical manager or HR representative or, or process so funny when you think about it because it's 100 percent, 1 million percent only ever you it's only ever you only you know if if you are waiting I'm, I'm just gonna do a really good job I'm just gonna do a really really good job if you're waiting for your manager or HR or a project manager or a colleague or a project leader or a scrum master or a software architect or, or whomever to lift you up from obscurity and set you on your golden path. Literally never going to happen. There are no white knights and there are no Prince Charmings for your career. You are not the professional version of Sleeping Beauty. It isn't all happening to you while you're over there doing your job with your head down. You're not asleep. You're not hiding from the fears and the failures. It's not all happening around you, right? Because here's the deal. Here's the actual truth. And I will tell you, this is not just inspiration that came from my client, Dora. If my other clients... And a lot of my friends are listening to this. You're probably thinking back on a conversation we had where I was asking weird questions. Hey, I've had this inspiration. I'm wondering. And you're probably like, oh, my God, I'm doing this, too. That's why Nicole had this whole conversation with me about build your brave framework and accountability. Own it like a boss. Or she had this big thing with me from out of the blue about experience it like a kindergartner. This is why (laughs) I verified this with a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of women in tech. And I did not leave a single conversation without saying this because I am investing in our future. You make your career. You are the only person making your career. You are always co-creating the situations in and of your career. Nothing is happening to you. You are co-creating. And to prove this, to give you some examples, I am going to out myself hardcore. (laughs) These are all stories from my own life. (laughs) Ready? Are you, like me, choosing to stay in roles with crappy managers that are all too happy to normalize bad behaviors? You are not waiting for Prince Charming. You're co-creating that. Are you choosing to stay with a manager who doesn't tell the other colleagues who have a challenge with you but instead call you a team player and not a team player, excuse me. I had colleagues early in my career who said, oh, Nicole, she's not a team player. And my manager did not say to those colleagues, why are you talking to me? You need to talk to Nicole. Did you talk to Nicole? Did you have that conversation with Nicole? No, no, no. This manager came to me and reported 
as if it was true that I'm not a team player. So I asked a lot of questions. <laughs> I was early in my career. I had only ever been on teams. I played high level volleyball and being a team player was really important to me. I could not understand the feedback. So I asked for specific examples and situations. This went on for months until finally my manager, who by the way, through this entire thing, rebuffed every request I had to actually talk to the other two men who were between five and 10 years older than me. One was more junior than me and one was more senior than me. Rejected every opportunity, every request I had to just talk to them. Finally, my manager is trying to find another word to describe what this not a team player meant. Un collegial. And do you know what came out of his mouth? Masculine. I'm masculine. Thank God he had enough self-awareness that he was like, oh shit, this is not a good look. And still, still never had the conversation with my two colleagues who were just insecure, fragile white men who didn't like getting orders and directions and pushback and better ideas from a younger white foreign woman. And I stayed with that manager for a year. <laughs> Co-created. You think I got a promotion? You think I got a salary increase? You think I got stretch opportunities? Of course not. I co-created that. I was waiting. I was waiting for someone to notice. Bullshit. Here's another example. <laughs> are you choosing to remain in projects that are ignoring best practices and making hard but necessary decisions? I did. <laughs> I was in a project that was all about globalization. There was a function of a company. It was a massive multi-million dollar investment, all about globalization, globalization of skills, globalization of access, globalization of reporting lines, globalization of technology. I mean, it was massive. I was in that project for a long time. <laughs> I'm trying to be very sensitive. I stayed in that project while the sponsor refused, refused, absolutely freaking refused to work outside of his European hours. May I remind you, it was a globalization project. So the sponsor was demanding everybody else work globally, not make themselves available all the time, but shift their hours so that they could have conversations, for example, if they were in the U.S. with APJ, so that they could have conversations between Europe and Asia, and then in the same week, Europe, North America, South America. And he himself was too important and too special and too European to actually live what he was telling other people to do. In addition to that, he had multiple people with multiple complaints of treating women and particularly members, men and women, particularly of the LGBTQI community badly, like genuinely badly. And he refused refused. Oh, they'll get better. I don't want to have conflict. We have tight timelines, blah, 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 blah. It was a disaster. I lost so much weight. I had so much dandruff from the stress. It was disgusting. And I stayed, I co-created that. I was waiting for some best, you know, some Prince Charming to come along in my career and just solve everything as a manager, as a mentor, as HR. HR was going to come in and solve everything. Yeah, no, no, no. I am the only person who builds my careers. That's it. It's me, 
I may mentor, I may be mentored, I may sponsor, I may be sponsored, I invest in myself, but at the end of the day, you know who decides my career? Me, 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 me. You, 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 you. You decide if you get certified. You decide if you get coaching. You decide if you have conflict skills. You decide if you stay and remain underpaid or if you move. You decide if you work 80 hours a week, 50 hours a week. 20 hours a week. That's your freaking decision. And while you're sitting around waiting for Prince Charming to come, waiting for the white knight, you're co-creating what you have. If it's awesome, if it's okay, and if it's not okay, if it's bad, if you're unhappy, if you're underpaid and overworked, if you're bored, <laughs> you create that just like I did just like I did. And here is where I finally said to myself, I've got to make a podcast episode about this. This has to get out. This is too much truth. As y'all know, I am a coach. I start with a consultation. I do this for a couple of reasons. Number one, I commit to my clients. That means I do not make an offer to help everyone. I am not the right coach and I have not enough time and I'm creating my business just like I created my career to take everyone on. So I start with a 60 minute one-on-one -on -one consultation. I call it a discovery call. We get real deep. I uncover what the actual problem is and if I'm the right person to support you. And then I say, this is specifically what I think you need to work on. This is your bespoke program. Here's my offer for you. And you decide if I'm the right coach for you. You decide if my diagnosis of a problem is what you're willing to work on. And then you say yes or no. If I gave you an offer, you get to say yes, you get to say no. I do not hound people. I do not follow up on people. I may check in. I may get an inspiration and share it with you once, maybe twice. That's it. Right? From the very beginning, I treat you like a full client. I insist that you get clear. I insist that you're honest. And I insist that you make decisions in your momentum and in your accountability. Because when you work with me, poof, 91% of the people who work with me make more money. People have doubled their income. A return on investment of 6x is not uncommon. Okay? So that's a little background in case you've never gone through that process with me. Here is where the straw hit the camel's back. <laughs> The drip of water entered the fuss and everything. I was like, yep, I have to get this into the world. This is too good. In the same week, I had a number of consultations with women, but strangely in this week with a lot more men. I don't talk to men. I don't market to men, but there's all these like personal references. And so men come to me. These are men who are like super allies too, right? <laughs> like, how can you work with me when I'm telling people, put on your white, mediocre white <laughs> man persona and sashay into the room, right? If you're not super, super secure in who you are right? <laughs> as a man. So here's the deal. Not one, not one of them, not one of them. When I said, what are you waiting for to solve your problem? Who are you expecting to solve your problem? Who should be and is not working? I asked it in a lot of different ways. Not one of them came back with HR, their manager, their scrum master, their software architect, their sponsor, their, you know, their project sponsor, their product sponsor. Not one of them. Not a single freaking one of them. They are not waiting for Prince Charming or the White Knight. They also have not been socialized to wait. <laughs> Women are. You are. 
And you need to unsocialize yourself. You need to unlearn this nonsense because this nonsense keeps you where you are. It does not lead you to where you want to be. My clients are not waiting for Prince Charming. That's why they're making more money. My clients are not waiting for a white knight. That's why they've got new opportunities. Many of my clients, many of my clients are offered roles that didn't exist until the other people knew that my client existed. They're not waiting. Men are not waiting. And you have to stop waiting too. And here's the deal. When you are waiting, here is my working theory right now as of 2021. Maybe this was published early 2022. But as of right now, here's my working theory. My working theory is that you don't believe you deserve it. When you say, well, the HR process, what you're actually saying is I don't deserve it. Oh, I don't know if I can ever recreate such a healthy manager relationship. What you're actually saying is I don't deserve this healthy manager relationship. This happened to me. I didn't help create it and I don't deserve it. Oh, it's just too much effort to find a new job. What if I don't like it? What you're actually saying is I don't deserve a healthier environment. I don't deserve new opportunities. Oh, I'm not sure I can negotiate to that higher rate. What you're saying is I don't deserve to earn market rate. That's what you're actually saying. There's all kinds of excuses and all kinds of waiting, but here's what I deeply believe. This is my working theory right now. You don't believe you deserve it. And so you keep co-creating a manager who accepts bad behavior. You co-create being underpaid. You co-create unhealthy environments because there's no Prince Charming or White Knight. It's just you. So here's my suggestion. If this at all speaks to you, if this at all speaks to you, I want you to practice looking in the mirror and saying, I co-create what I have. I create what I have and who I am. I create something better. And if you can be more specific, be more specific. I create a promotion. I create a salary increase. I create boundaries. I create happy environments. I create thriving as a woman in tech. I not only, this is what I say, I not only create amazing opportunities for myself, I do it for all of my clients, my current clients and my past clients and my future clients who I don't even know yet. Can you hear the excitement in my voice? Because I create it. I'm creating it for you right now with this podcast. Don't wait for Prince Charming. Don't wait for the white knight. They don't exist. But you do. And you, you are the full story. And you deserve, you deserve your dreams. So go create them. All right, until next time, brave it up. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Celebrate Brave podcast. If you're ready to build your brave, to live a life you love and create a career that matters to you, reach out. Together, we can spend time one-on-one to explore how I can help you. And until then, share this episode with people in your life, people who can join our movement to redefine brave, how we identify it, experience it, and celebrate it.